Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com here today to talk with you about Rolls razors. You may have been out antiquing and you asked the sales attendant, I'm looking for an old school razor and they say, ah, oh, there's one in the display case right down that aisle. And you're all excited, you're hoping to find that Gillette fat boy and you come up to one of these instead. I have to say, of all the antiquing I've done over the years, I think Rolls razors would probably be the most common razor you come across, uh, which I think is probably attributed to the fact that it's a huge, hunkin' solid piece of metal that people just can't bring themselves to throw out. And that kind of is part of the cachet around Rolls razors. The other real funny thing that would always seem to happen is you'd have the attendant at the antique store tell you that they got a Rolls Royce razor for you when it's right down that aisle over there. And in fact, that's actually where the name comes from. So the Rolls razor, I think the first time it was used in Great Britain was around 1922, the name. It really got popular towards uh, the Great Depression though, that era in the, the late 20s, early 30s. And the company survived all the way up to about 1958. They wanted to kind of invoke this name Rolls to kind of you know, speak to the quality of, of the razor system. Um, funny enough though, the company was also making washing machines, which I couldn't think of a more juxtaposed set of products that a company's making. Safety razors and washing machines. Um, but today, we're gonna take you on a spin cycle to show you how one of these work. So you may kind of first see one of these guys. This is the uh, the more common Imperial model. Uh, this is the Vicant model over here. Uh, that's noted by the single Greek key pattern going down the middle. It's an aluminum case versus this is a brass case. Uh, this was made for more of the wartime, World War II era, whereas this is more of their standard production. But you may ask yourself, how do I even use one of these? So there's two buttons on either end and they correspond with opening up uh, different parts of the razor kind of clamshell or, or case. So one of the panels is gonna be a little leather strop like this. And if you push the other button, you're actually gonna release the other side, which is a hone. So uh, then you have all these internals. You got a razor handle that comes right off by just twisting this lower portion of the handle and it actually is going to, hopefully we get a little angle here, there's a small ball right up here on this handle that just goes up and down. And that actually is what locks the razor blade down. So you got your handle, and then you got a blade. And this blade again is a part of this internal part and it just twists off. So you just twist it 90 degrees and it comes on and comes off. So you got all these different parts. It's kind of maybe a little confusing in the beginning. So to actually get this into razor mode, what you're going to do is lower this little ball and then slide the blade on, hold it kind of in the middle, and then just tighten that ball. Tighten the handle and it's gonna be now attached. And this little kind of bar here it actually serves as your safety bar. So it would be brought up to your cheek or whatever on your face and that would actually be the safety bar. So this is considered a safety razor, although you may kind of say to yourself, gosh, you know, looks like a straight razor. And that is actually how most uh, safety razor brands got started. They were making um, kind of miniature version of straight razors that you put on a handle and use but you have all the same upkeep as a straight edge. You have to uh, hone it and strop it regularly to actually be able to use this blade, but it's a permanent blade you're always gonna have. It's not disposable. Don't forget, that was the Gillette invention was the disposable safety razor blade, uh, not the safety razor itself. So these little blades can be maintained using the case itself. That was kind of the whole point that you're wanting to be the man who's traveling, the man on the go, and this Rolls Razor allowed you to have everything in one convenient little kind of uh, handy pocket. Uh, so what we're gonna do is actually show you how this works. 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the hone. We're gonna actually strop the blade. So don't forget, stropping means you're going to be going backwards uh, with the blade basically trailing like this. And so they knew this and uh, the, the designers of this product and it's actually set up perfectly. So each one of these panels has two different kind of um, snapper, I don't know what you want to call it, like a little key almost of how it goes back together. And you can only put it on one respective side. You can't put the strop on the opposite side. It can only go on one side. So we're gonna put the strop back on and now we can see inside here and we got a little uh, kind of sharp little area here. I don't know what you want to call it. It's like a little kind of fixture. We're just going to call it a fixture to hold the blade. So we're going to fixture our blade on, rotate it 90 degrees, and now the blade is attached. And if you pull this handle out, you're going to see the stropping action in real life here. So that's all there is to it. There's basically a set of gears along the side and as you come to the end, it flips it over, and now your safety bar itself will actually flip and provide the, uh, the angle needed to get the perfect stropping angle off your little blade. So it's pretty ingenious. And so you're, if you wanted to get ready for your shave, you would sit here and very quickly work both sides of it. So it's pretty, pretty neat. Um, these blades, you know, sometimes the sharpening stones crack. The, the model we have here for our video today actually does have a cracked stone. Uh, funny enough, Rolls did make replacement parts. They made replacement uh, strops, replacement hones, and we've even come across some of these uh, by chance over the years, and you can actually change them out. Uh, I've seen people kind of also fabricate their own thing. But if you don't use the case to get the, the blade sharp, and let's say the blade's really, really bad and you want to use one of these, uh, we do offer sharpening services here at Razor Emporium for a Rolls razor blade. It is the exact same price as a regular straight razor. It's not discounted because it's a smaller blade. In fact, it's actually more work to try to hang on and hold on to this little you know, blade and try to uh, hone it as compared to a regular straight razor, but it takes all the same processes, the same stones, the same progressions, but you can, you can get this back into working condition since it is a piece of tempered steel and you can get great shaves out of them. I've, I know some people that do that. It is pretty cool in the sense that you have a, basically a travel razor with all the components needed to operate it. Um, so I think this is kind of their big claim to fame was that they had the only kind of integrated uh, razor and case system like this. In this same era, 20s, 30s, you see a lot of other safety razor brands like Valet Auto Strop that had um, you know, little strops for their blades and other, you know, Wilkinson Sword had little strops for their blades. But I think this is the only one that really utilized the actual case and a, a mechanical action to take care of that for you. So definitely very cool. Um, and back to that kind of antique store analogy I started off with. These are the most common thing I ever found when I would out, you know, be out antiquing in Arizona or wherever, California. Um, I think they're so widely available that the market for them is not as high as some of the Gillettes, for instance. So uh, a, a razor like this in found condition, you know, they're, they're can be found for 25 to maybe 45 $50 in found condition. If it's been restored, if it's been polished and cleaned up, it's gonna be more than that. Um, they are somewhat collectible, but I think more than anything, they are kind of a really cool uh, timepiece of where safety razor shaving has come from and kind of the elaborate methods and means that the different makers came up with to try to get customers to use their product and, and enjoy kind of shaving on the go. So that is what I got for you on the Rolls Razor. It's not the Rolls Royce, but it's certainly a very high quality, awesome razor for you. Thanks so much for watching guys. Check out our YouTube channel for other videos and stay tuned for more from Razor Emporium.